You know what? You're probably right. Do you want to see me do it again? Welcome to round two of Cool Season Grass where it don't belong. Today, new seed varieties, different seeding techniques. Look at it. Terrible. Terrible. Been out here the past couple days after work and this morning, just kind of scratching the ground up, getting all the dead material off and scalping it and sucking it up with the bagger. Over here, I set that on fire because it was already dead and want nothing coming back. I didn't mean to set it on fire actually. I was burning, I was trying to spot burn a couple weeds out and then it started going across the yard. And then because I'm kind of an angsty teenager on the inside, I sat there and just enjoyed the burn. And then I put it out with the sprinkler system. That was pretty rad. <laughs> cool. <laughs> fire, 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 fire. <laughs> got all the crap I pulled out of my yard. And I had about that much before too. And I got rid of it. Later on tonight, I'll crack a beer and set it on fire too. I swear sometimes I don't know if they're playing good or they're killing herself. Son's got his cousin over here. They're having a good time around the corner. All right, let's talk about aeration. I think a lot of people aerate too much. Not too much. I think people do it when they don't need to do it. Now, if you've got some really hard clay soil, I understand it. But I don't have that here. I have a sandy base soil. Which, by the way, looks a lot better than it did. It's been zero topsoil put on this yard. And... It goes back to what I've heard, uh, Matt Martin says it all the time, that you don't need topsoil, you just need to get something growing on top of it. I think I proved it. But this is what I think you should do if you don't know whether you should aerate or not. Here, I got me a screwdriver. Watch how this sings through there. Right through. Right through. Right through. And it's like that all over this yard. I mean, considering my front yard used to look like this, this is over here where I park my vehicles. I think I'm doing all right. So this time, I'm not gonna aerate. I'm not gonna use a slit seeder like I did last time. This time I'm using a seed mulch, but it's gonna be a different kind of seed mulch. I'll show you that in a minute. Let's look at the seed varieties that I picked out to screw with this year. Okay, first up, five star fescue from last year. So nothing new, that's the bag left over from last year so it'll be interesting to see how much of it comes up it's about six pounds left in that bag and I got one little corner of the yard I'm gonna oversee with it and uh, we'll see in future videos how well properly stored kept dry seed comes up after it's two years old I guess it's two years old yeah two years old because it was there for a year I bought it and now it's two years out in the front yard I'm gonna use the triple threat I've heard really good things about the Triple Threat. I bought that from Southern Seeds. They're an awesome company. I talked to the guy on the phone. Um, that did real good in North Carolina at a spot in a similar temperature where I'm at. So it's gonna be interesting to see how it does down in the southeastern coast. And uh, place your bets how long it'll last. Third seed variety. I'm gonna put it with the Triple Threat. SPF 30 Hybrid Bluegrass. Hybrid bluegrass is a cross between Texas bluegrass and your standard Kentucky bluegrass. It's supposed to have really good heat tolerance. I don't know how well it's going to do here, but we're going to find out. So place your bets. Five stars at second week in August. We'll see how long that stuff lasts. And lastly, we have Midnight Kentucky bluegrass. Interesting story how I got my hands on this. So I didn't pay for that midnight kentucky bluegrass um i ordered the spf 30 from outside pride and they screwed up and sent me the midnight and then i called them and said hey you sent me the wrong thing and they said okay cool they made it right i'm not going to uh poo poo or crap on uh outside pride for that because they made it right within a week i didn't have to pay anything they sent it and they also said just hold on to the midnight so let's see how long it'll last then place your bets what you think and this climate, uh, I don't think it's gonna do too good, but we shall see. It'll look sweet during the wintertime. Look at the sun, I picked the wrong time of day to do this. So, 
We're gonna draw a line just like we did last year, right here. I had the Scots on this side and I had the five star on this side. This year, we're gonna have what's left over the five star on this side, all the way down to the end on the side piece with the Midnight Kentucky Bluegrass. Out here, it's gonna be SPF 30 and the triple threat. All right, I need to stop drinking beer and yakking and get some seed on the ground. Look at that triple threat. moment to talk about seed mulch. Seed mulch is little pellets that you can buy that swell up and hold the seed in place and they hold moisture. Um, that stuff is like 32, 30, 32 dollars for a 32 pound bag. It's like a dollar a pound. But I'm gonna present you an alternative. At least I don't know if it's an alternative yet, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Alfalfa pellets. Horse food. Anybody who's been watching any of my videos for any amount of time, I've mentioned that I grew up in a very ag uh, heavy area. I don't live there anymore, but that's where I grew up. Uh, we had goats when I was a kid and we fed them uh, alfalfa pellets and sweet feed and stuff like that. And I noticed when it gets wet, it does the exact same thing. And a bag of it's less than $20 for 50 pounds. So I'm gonna throw it out here. That's my new technique new and uh, let's see how it acts and see how it spreads I also want to mention that I got this idea about the alfalfa pellets because evidently organic gardeners and people who do organic lawns use this for a fertilizer so it actually has a low NPK value on it let's see how it spreads spreading it look at all them little things bouncing so I ran out of daylight yesterday my biggest mistake thus far is waiting too late in the day to get started but it is what it is that's what life is I spent all the way till dark pushing those alfalfa pellets out that uh, earthway spreader and the holes ain't big enough it spreads them but it takes forever so I found out the best way to do that is just to pour it in a five gallon bucket and act like you're feeding chickens again. So I got all of the 200 pounds of alfalfa pellets on this 5,000 square feet. Check it out. You can see they, um, I run the sprinklers or they, I, I just didn't cut them off. You can see how they do just like those mulch pellets, they swell up. I feel like this is gonna work pretty good though. The only thing I have left to do now is I need to put starter fertilizer on there and I'm gonna use a leftover bag of X start that I have from when I did it uh, the back last year and it was kept dry. So everything should be good. You can't get your hands on that, but starter fertilizer is starter fertilizer, generally speaking. And I also need to spray. Let's talk about that real quick going to spray a tank mix of Cyanora 9.7 for bugs. I'm going to spray uh, Mesotrione, which is the generic tenacity. And I'm gonna spray Propaganazole fungicide. Mix them all together in a tank and blast them out there. Obviously, 
I got some weeds and I'm gonna have some more come up. Tenacity, AKA Mesotrone, I'll take those out and turn them white and kill them. That's the plan anyway. That's the best time to use Mesotrone. Any, uh, anyway, I tried to use it as a post emergent last year and it turned mature weeds white, but I think it really works best in seeding applications like this. Uh, the Cyanora will run off any solid webworms or anything that could try to come into this grow while the plants are immature because they can't really take a bunch of uh, gnawing worms. And there's actually the Propiconazole, the same thing. You gotta put a lot of water down. You have a risk of fung a fungus outbreak. So the Propiconazole will help with that for the first month. And also, I read a study somewhere that Propiconazole is supposed to speed up germination. So we'll see how that works out. Um, if you've got any questions, drop a comment. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, if you're interested in any of these different varieties I put down or want to see how any of these techniques I use turns out, I'll put another video up later. I'll possibly put some, if I remember to do it, I'll put some pictures up on my Instagram. You can find that in the description. Well, thanks for checking me out and thanks for watching. Come back and see me.